Hudson MMA Roadshow, episode number 289. My name is John Morgan. Oscar Willis is with me from the World MMA Award nominated, the Mac Life. And you know where we're at. We're still in Fight Island. And if you know where we're at Fight Island, you know what that means. We're sitting at the office right here in Stills, frosty beverages in hand on a beautiful Thursday afternoon. And Oscar, I got to say, uh, of course, let me just throw, I mean, Stills is the official home, the Fight Island home yeah, of the yeah. MMA Roadshow. But I got to say, man, uh, I think it hit me like eh, sometime today, maybe yesterday. I'm starting to really get that like Hotel California vibe. Like we we can never ever yeah. leave. We've I don't want to complain, man, because I'm I'm not that guy. I feel fortunate that we're working. I'm happy to be doing what I love. Uh, but you know, this is now coming up on six weeks in a relatively short period of time that we've been here in uh, Fight Island, Abu Dhabi. Of course, week three of the five week stretch. I'm starting to feel like I'm just never gonna go home. Yeah. Right. You know, you don't like to complain. You're not that guy. Luckily, I am that guy. So I will say, yeah, no, I'm still okay. Uh, had a little bit of a grump, you know, Monday through to yesterday. And then I think I think it's the, d- the days off kind of. Right. I was just, you know, there's only so many times I can pace around my room, lovely room that it is. But, you know, I was getting a little bit stir crazy. and um, But today I feel okay. I think the work helped yesterday doing all For those sure. interviews. Getting back. Yeah, I think that's what, you know what, I think probably that's what it was. The first week. You know, it was it was the getting in that sort of thing. Week two, we did interviews on Tuesday and interviews on Wednesday. Whereas yeah. this week, we just did nineteen interviews yesterday. Yeah. And you're right, we didn't have that extra stuff to do on Tuesday. So I think maybe that's why it set in again. I don't want the last. Thing I will. I, want. I will say when you told me yesterday, hey, guess think of it like this: two halfway through, I was there like, fucking what? Halfway? <laughs> oh no! Yeah, halfway through the five week stretch. Like I said, I, I never want somebody to tune in and be like, oh, these guys are chilling in paradise and looking at them griping and whining. I'm just starting to go a little bit stir crazy. Like the the bubble is shrinking a little bit. I guess yeah. is what I'm saying. I mean, I, I'm I'm okay. I think next Thursday when we record this, you know, I might be just sort of belligerent. Well, we'll see. We'll see because <laughs> next week I think is when we get kind of a more like. I mean, everybody's looking forward to that main event next week, yeah, right? Yeah. Not that were, not that this one's a bad one, but everybody's looking forward to that. That's a big one. And then, of course, then we go on to the pay-per-view, and then, and then we're home. So it's not that, I feel like we're in that crucial little middle ground right I, now. I did predict Monday of week three would be when I started to get annoyed. And pretty much nailed it. Yeah. Pretty much nailed it. By the way, you've been uh, you've been staying pretty busy, though, man. I talked to you, and you're, you're going biking. And, uh, man, you're, I, I like it. You're, you're finding something to do during the day. You can only masturbate so much. Fair, fair. So fair. you got like you know you got to put that energy somewhere else. So I've been going bike riding, and you know it's nice to go around the same circle over and over <laughs> again, and wave at the same security guards over and over again. It's literally just like basically two straightaways, right? Yeah, it I mean, it really is. And every time you go past, you sort of go, "Do I look at them? Do I nod? What do I do?" And then you know I try and get a conversation going, and then realize they don't they don't speak English, so it's just like, "Hey, hey." Anyway, yeah, no, it's been fun. I've, so I've had a great time. We did. <laughs> All right, now, now that Oscar's done sufficiently complaining, we did, we did have a little bit of fun, though, this week. Since we've gotten together last, uh, we did get to go jet skiing briefly on Monday, which yes, was fun, did. getting out on the water. And, uh, you know, it's kind of those kind of Monday afternoons are fun when you've got people that are coming to town that are just getting out of quarantine, yeah. uh, and you kind of get to see them as they're, like, sprinting for the beach so yeah. they can get out of their hotel room for a little bit. It's, it's kind of fun, hang out and, and talk to some old friends and that sort of thing. It's all right. Got to watch the soccer on Sunday, in which they do a special here, ladies and gentlemen, where you pay... What is it, $30? Yeah, it's like $25, $26. $25 drink as much as you can in 90 minutes. Half By the way, that's right. We, They say all, all you all you want. All you can drink, all, all you want. All you yeah. can. Yeah, yeah. No, we say all you can. We're, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. basically, it's a test to see how much we can get. I mean, basically we're pushing the limits of, you know, like decency, and I think they're pretty annoying. Oh, I think us. you probably could have got past those limits <laughs> on Sunday, actually, John. I remember <laughs> distinctly you being like, you call this a double? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally multiple times. Like, my dude, come on, come on, more, more, more. And then I said, I had to say to him, I was like, just give the fucking guy triples, all right? Just sit, let's just, let's just cut the bullshit here. Let's just do it. You were and looking out for me yeah, over there. And then, you know, as we left, the security guy had to tell us to quiet down. But he's a nice guy. He still waves high. He just, yeah. we just got a little rowdy one time. We live here now. We're yeah. going to have days that we're a little rowdy, and we're going to have days that are not. And it's nice to know that everyone on my floor can hear me walking down the hallway. <laughs> Singing and shouting. There were reports there of were you singing yeah, after yeah. the game. Ah, your squad won big. So yeah, what are you gonna yeah. do? It was a good time. Yeah, but fucking fuck all of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, listen, we did do the uh, full and a half episode, of course, as we do every week. So if you're over at patreon.com slash the MMA Roadshow, we certainly appreciate that. But I did want to take up two quick points for people that didn't get a chance to hear it and, and, uh, and, and maybe you know kind of pick your brain on this one. I was a little bit surprised. Of course, we do the and a half episodes <laughs> immediately right after. So we don't really get a chance to – kind of soak in what other people are saying. I mean, it's just our fresh yeah. opinions right off the bat. I got to say, 
in the aftermath of last week's event, UFC on uh, ESPN 16, uh, I was surprised. Wait, is it? So they're off live completely. Yes, I've completely lost Fight track. Fight Island four. There you go. Five. Uh, Fuck, I didn't even know. I was I was a little surprised. I thought how many people were being kind of hard on Holly Holm. I saw a lot of people on social media afterwards saying, "Ah, I thought the fight was a little boring. wasn't really all that That's impressed." That's bizarre. Yeah, yeah. To me, I, look, I, I'll, I'll admit I have not gone back and watched the fight in its entirety. But as I relive it through my head, I felt like you and I were both pretty high on on her performance. Not that. I still, I think we're right. I don't know. I, I saw a lot of people saying, oh, "Holly Holm, guy, so boring." I, I just don't get it. I a, a, a fight doesn't have to, like a fight doesn't have to be back and forth to be good. Uh, if a, one one person in the fight has a great performance, that's still interesting and fun to watch. Right. And okay, cutting the bullshit. Obviously, as the two of them were walking out to the octagon, I didn't think fucking twenty five minutes of glory. I thought, okay, well, let's <laughs> let's see what we get here. Right. I enjoyed watching Holly Holmes' performance. Yep. I thought that her aggression was something we haven't seen from her in, a, if ever. Right. But I was like, yeah, that might have been the most aggressive. I was season. actually getting excited. I was like, fuck yeah, this is cool. I think the people who are complaining, I do wonder maybe if, for some portions of the MMA sphere. Uh, they've bubble would be a better word because it was ah, see what you did there. Uh, maybe Holly's just kind of outstayed her welcome at this point for some people. I don't agree with that. I think yeah. that's a bit silly. I think you know the woman's still clearly at the top of the division, yes. like it or not. Yes. Um, yeah, but I think maybe Holly, because of her name value, is often put into these positions where you know they could always just force her into a title shot or something right. like that. And so maybe there's some people who think like, oh God, like you've had your chance. You're That's not like the get people that push back on the Uriah Favors of the world, or the Frankie like Yeagers the of the world. Sort of or they're Fra exactly right. Frankie right. Yeager sort of person who could always be there and you kind of know that they're getting special treatment and stuff. So I can understand why people might find that irritating, but with Holly Holm, who the fuck else is there? Okay, yeah, there's Jermaine Durandamy, and that's it. Like those are the only two people. And in people the clearly hate Jermaine Durandamy way more than they hate Holly Holm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. God, can you imagine if they they possibly will fight and that would be like the two most unpopular people on the roster? I, I don't even know Good what Good thing there's no fans community. anymore. <laughs> 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 so I was a little surprised. I just wanted to mention that because I was a little surprised to see negative feedback. I thought it was one of her better performances. So. I, thought it was her, I, I, I honestly believe it's her best performance because it lasted longer and Ronda fought like a spaz. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, a lot of people compared it to the Ronda. I agree. I think let's it was better another, than Ronda. Let's put a PC term on that. Ronda fought badly. <laughs> That's not... I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> I know what you mean. I don't, I don't think it has that bad a connotation in the state. So you're lucky there. Oh, it's it not. The audience. Nah, not as bad. Yeah. Fun fact that I've got a tattoo of Spurs on my foot, and there's a guy here, and his accent. He's like, "Hey, Spurs!" Every time he sees me. It's cool. It's it is nice. pretty funny. It freaks me out. All right. Here's the other one I wanted to bring at you. Carlos Condit, right? Picked up the victory. Everybody was happy for it. Of course, everybody loves Carlos Condit. Uh, then the memes started going around with Dan Hardy, right? Um, oh, how cool is that? They were in the cage together again. Now, of course, on fight night. Kind of said, I'll take some of these fights. And the one that got brought up was Matt Brown, who yeah. said, hey, dude, I'll take that fight. And I love that fight. But I started thinking about it, and I'm probably already tipping my hand a little bit, but which one would you rather see? Because, I, I, hell, since I laid it out there, I'm just going to throw it out there, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. I started thinking about it, and I think if I get to choose one of those fights, I'd rather see Hardy and Condit rematch before Matt Brown. Because, to me, you know, we've had this, like, looming specter of – of, of, you know, Hardy coming back yeah, forever, yeah, right? Yeah. And, he, and he's always kind of teasing it, but it yeah. doesn't really happen. And then this week, in these, you know, interviews that we've been having with the talent, he said definitively, I would love that fight. You know, who doesn't want to go back and revisit a fight like that? You know, one, you know, I lost. I made a mistake. You know, he, man, he was describing in detail exactly how the ending sequence was. Like, you could tell it still stuck with him. Um, and so the history there, I like it because it gets Hardy back in because – I don't know that, you know, in all these years of him teasing, yeah, one more, one more, one more. I don't know that I've ever heard him f sound that convicted about one mm. particular fight. And so that excites me. And the other thing is this, it doesn't mean that we don't get Condit Brown later. Like, it wouldn't preclude that from That's happening true. down the road. And so I, I think on the one hand, I think my immediate reaction was, ah, Brown's, Brown's, Brown's more immediate right now. But then I started thinking about it. If this is what gets Hardy back for that one more that he's been wanting to do forever and you, it was clear how passionate he was about it, I kind of, I kind of like that one. And again, I, I don't think it stops, you know, uh, the the Brown fight happening from later down the road. It's funny because when you first started, I was like, ah, oh, you know, I still think Brown. But then the more you spoke, I'm like, well, you've got good points. Like, in fact, the three of them are very, very similar. It's like these old gunslingers, and probably yeah. throw, probably throw Cerrone in there as well. Just like the same sort of yeah, vibe yep. of all of them, you know, like violent guys who just, you know, got a couple more, or maybe that's about it. Yep. I like the Condit 
uh, Hardy fight, but I am going to stick and say I would prefer to watch the Matt, the, the Brown fight because yeah. I just anticipate more blood and violence being in that one, like the, both, the, the close elbows both of them throw and stuff like that, and there is a history that it didn't happen. I think with Dan, it's like... The, like so, for example, I'd, I'd probably rather see Dan Hardy versus Nick Diaz than Carlos Condit versus Nick Diaz. I think there's like there's fresher, yeah, yeah. there's fresher matchups for yep. Dan Hardy to come back and do. But I understand he, if he's if it's Trudy, he's just coming back for one. It would make sense to do the Condit one if yeah. he's coming back to test it and see how he feels. I, I could see other fights working out better. I know that that as you were talking, I was thinking, man, the only bad side of that is, I mean, and I'm not trying to, you know, you know, you know pour water on the, the flame here but you know uh, he, he could look bad Hardy could look bad Hardy could look bad or what does it say about Condit if a guy's been away for five years comes back and beats you then retires immediately after it's yeah. like what do you do with him then you know I mean sure of course his, his own legacy has him safe you know? sure so that's when you do the brown fight but it's I think we're all feeling quite nice that Carlos Condit won and I just think let's let's it, the guy himself says he's not past his prime which okay right he said that but it's uh, let's try and push. I don't, I don't know. think I've ever heard anybody say, "You know what? I'm just just a, just a hair past my prime." Fucking Cerrone says it all the time. Cerrone's <laughs> <laughs> no. always like, oh, "I'm an old man. Just got one more, two more left." I don't know. He doesn't sound like that, but but yeah. I, I, to be honest, both of them are spectacular fights. I, I think with Dan Hardy, similar to what I just said about Holly Holm, it's getting close to the time where people are a little bit bored of hearing about it and right. they want to see it. I agree. I so agree with that. I think that's one thing that kind of had me leaning. I was like, well, he's yes. all in so on this one. If that's the case, then if he wants to do it, like, then let's make it happen. Yeah, because it was always like, ah, oh, just, I, you know, it's got to be the right name. It's got to yeah. be the right situation. Not Mickey Gould. Right. Now he's <laughs> like, yeah, this is it. So I, I, I we'll see what happens. Uh, he did say he's going to talk to UFC. He said he hasn't done it just yet, uh, but, but we'll see how it plays out. All right, before we get to this week's card, I want to ask you one more thing. Obviously, it stayed in the news uh, from the whole time we've been here. This Israel Adesanya versus John Jones rivalry. Yeah, it's starting to get uncomfortable to me. It's starting to get, and and maybe I'm wrong here. Uh, uncomfortable is probably the wrong word. Like I'm, I'm used to seeing a lot of things in this business, so I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable. Likewise, <laughs> yeah. I would just say maybe it's getting a little bit ridiculous to the point that I think, you know, the amount of talk that's going back and forth between them, the amount of tweets that are going back and forth between them, I feel like it's getting to the point where it's counterproductive and like I'm starting to just tune them out like now yeah. I see them and I'm like ah been going over this all day every day like uh what you know what what happened now and and you know listen hey they're both they both got some sharp zingers one way or another <laughs> like hey that was a good one buddy that was like but I feel like most of which are to tell the other one that was shit mine was funny yeah, yeah. and I feel like I, I feel like maybe we're kind of out of material at this point and, and maybe we could you know pull back a little and hey you know let us all miss you a little bit you know what I mean like I, I just there's an art to it I'm telling you I feel like that's th that's there is an art to it man and I feel like it I want to get your take because maybe it's just me. I'm getting to a point now where I'm like, dude, first of all, there's no way they're fighting next. Yeah. There's no and, – and, and wanted to ask UFC President Dana White about it, but haven't seen him in recent <laughs> times. Um, hopefully we can ask him about it later. But there's no way those two are fighting next. Now, do I believe they could be setting up a long play? Yeah, yeah, for, yeah sure, for sure, man. I see, the, I see the steps to get there. The steps to get there better not include 18 months of this for every day because I can't take it anymore. Yeah, so for me, I think – um, it's exciting, right? They're both they are, they're both entertaining guys. They both do have some zingers, right? But I think when you have a Twitter war with someone, you even need to do it like two or three tweets each. No, that's not true. Like three tweets in total, right? Once every three days, or one day of bullshit, like loads, yeah, and, yeah, then, yeah. and then no more. Right? They went from like Monday to Wednesday of just like da -da -da, and and in real time replying to each yes. other without tagging each other. So yes. it was like separate tweets. So it was just fucking up my timeline. And you know, we write articles. You know, the really terrible articles. We embed three tweets. You in. have to. I I even stopped doing that. I was like, God, oh, no one cares That's anymore. It. I feel like we were getting to the point where like you know, it's, it's especially right now. It's funny because you know, um, we're here in, in Fight Island. You know, we've got Simon Head in England. We've got uh, guys on the East Coast. We've got guys on the West Coast. So the junkie staff has has pretty much the globe covered in terms of like hours of the day. 
So you're like communicating to people, and at some point you're like, D -d they've been going at this all. Day. I don't, yeah. I don't want to write Dude, anything more about this. They pretty much crossed time zones. Yes, I feel like they really did a great job of like just spanning the day. There was even one tweet that was like, and John was like, oh, I got him. He's up, and he's like, and and yeah, he's, he's like, in the back. Actually, he's like, it's twelve p.m. Yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, come on, man. What are we now? We're breaking down time well, zones. I tell you what's even funnier as well. So obviously everyone, it started off as being like you know, John. Is basically trying to find every way to insinuate is he's gay without calling him gay, right? And stuff like that, and really like kind of childish stuff like that. And then it went like fucking got really deep really quickly when Izzy brought up John's mother, who's obviously passed away. Yes, that was but, too much. That but, was too much. But then they spoke so much, it almost like took away the complete deep, the deep of that. And it's like John was like, ah, oh, whatever, and they just carried on. So it's like yeah. the, the level. Can you imagine John Jones had a chance to take the high road? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine that? Yeah. He could have taken the high road and said, ah, you've gone too far. Let's not talk I'm anymore. I'm done with this discussion Well, did I tell you, talk to say about done with this discussion. How many times has John said, I'm done with this guy. I'm not going to reply anymore. And then he always replied. Now, that's fair enough. I bite on a lot of shit too. Um, but yeah, it, you said it best. The running out of material. So I, to be fair, the last couple of days, I think there's been a lot less. Maybe like someone told them. Like, hey. You're annoying, <laughs> um, but uh, maybe Twitter like muted them as a whole. Maybe, like, yeah. maybe they're still just pounding away, thinking <laughs> they're going through to each other. <laughs> but I just I think uh, make you know, like you said, there's, there's not like make make us want it. Don't yeah. make us want it and then regret we got it. That's it. Because I don't want to look. I'm not trying to disrespect these guys as as men, and I'm certainly not trying to disrespect them as fighters. Man, they are phenomenal, and the two of them, it's you know. It's I not a fight I feel like I have to see, but it's like, all right, sign me up if it ever happens. I enjoy, like, I enjoy the personality aspect of it. It's not just the fight itself, which is going to be tremendous, like, physically as an, as an athletic right. endeavor. I enjoy the fact that they're both about the same age, but they are clearly two different generations. You've got right. John Jones, who's, like, the stereotypical, uh, this sounds really, like, professory, but the stereotypical archetype of, like, masculine. You know, right. like, oh, I'm a fucking bro. I've got, yeah, yeah. I've got my dog that kills people, my gun that kills people, <laughs> and fucking this that kills people. I've got <laughs> knives and shit. <laughs> fucking come to the yard. I never thought about it yeah. like that, but it's so true, yeah. right? And then, like, then you've got Israel, who's like, I like to watch cartoons and dye my hair pink, and I've got a breast. <laughs> you know, so it's it's the... the, the and <laughs> I really think that's that oh. in itself is the crux of why John can't understand Israel. I think John really doesn't understand, like... A f an effeminate guy. That's true. Um, That's true. And I, so I enjoy the clash of cultures. Essentially, I think it's a really interesting clash of cultures. And I think this, but you know, when it's when it's nearing the point of like you're gay, yeah, well you're stupid. It's like yeah, okay. all right, all right, got yeah. enough, got yeah. enough of it. I do, I do. I mean, look, what do you think the path to the fight is? Like, I mean, obviously, Izzy has made it clear he wants to fight Cannoneer if Cannoneer wins, right? So he's got to win that fight. And then I guess I, I think uh, was it was it Eugene Berryman did submission radio I think and he said like, didn't he lay the seeds kind of like maybe he'd go to two hundred five and then go to heavyweight was that was uh, that or? it was it was no new seeds per se because they've right. always been saying that right. they he just Eugene just said that it doesn't really matter what John does that right. fight will be like so if John loses three in a row Izzy still wants to fight him if John moves to heavyweight Israel's fought at heavyweight and stuff like that so right. it, the the. The work, it's quite clear to me John wants to fight Israel now because it's going to make him more money than he's earned in a while. Yep. Well, he's not a champion anymore. No pay for points, maybe. But, um, but it's clear that Israel's you're going to do it on my timeline. Now, I think, and I said this, I think, last week, or maybe on the and a half episode, I forget, but uh, <laughs> well I, I personally believe they they could look to put Israel versus Yan for the 205 pound title next, yeah. especially if Canada loses. If Canada loses, I believe that's what they'll do, yeah, yeah. and then they'll stop John from moving up and just having fight at 205 and right. then if he beats Israel then he moves up you know it doesn't really change much but so interesting. I feel like the, I feel like personally if what Dana said about Habib and Connor I don't even remember it's been so long since we've heard from Dana <laughs> 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 but I think he you know he said that they had the old Pfizer lined up and then it wasn't going to happen and uh, whatever uh, I, I could see them really pushing for John and Israel to do that <sighs> oh, but I can't watch them together for that long it would get really cringy. Oh my god! Like, Shut up, bro! And it would be it would be Israel blowing kisses at John, and John being like, oh, "This oh. guy's trying to sh fuck me, bro." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we'll see what the future holds. All right, this week it's you. Should we just totally shit on that fight? And <laughs> we both want to see it. You know, I want to see it. I just don't want to see anything about it. Can they just show up yeah. one day in the stadium or something? All right, USC on ESPN Plus 37 is this week again the third of five consecutive events in Fight Island leading up to the pay per view 
uh, later this month, of course. And uh, the headliner is Marlon Marias versus Corey Sanhagen in a very key bantamweight matchup with maybe number one contender stuff at stake, maybe not. Um, listen, we've had this opportunity the, the last couple of weeks to interview the talent, which I really enjoy doing. And uh, rather than hearing uh, our non-technical analysis, how about here is uh, Dan Hardy, Michael Chiesa, and Paul Felder uh, all breaking down what they see as, as the most important, you know, aspects of this game mentally, psychologically, physically, all those things. Let's get their breakdown of the main event so it sounds way more smarter than anything <laughs> we can come up with, and then we'll, then we'll talk about it. I think it's just way more smart. It is just way smart. <laughs> and then I the don't think you say smarter. <laughs> oh, there do you go. I, I don't know. See, Folks, okay, okay. proof. Play the audio. Proof. <laughs> Dan, I want to ask you about the, the, the kind of psychology of this main event, right? I think it's kind of interesting. Like, you got Marlon, who um, probably should have had a title shot and didn't didn't get it. You know, he won the fight, and there was schedule on it. So, I want to start with him. What do you think his mindset is coming in here? Does he feel like anger, and is that good to have that, or is that bad to be in that mindset? Um... It's it's an interesting it's an interesting situation. I mean, yesterday he seemed he just seemed very calm, and I, and I, I don't know whether that's him trying to just be let me focus on this fight and get this one won. Because, I mean, he's made such a case to to you know to be in there for the belt. The frustration's got to be there. It's got to be there, and 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 I, and I would imagine there's a few. I mean, Aljamain Sterling must be feeling fairly frustrated as well, and and I would imagine that a lot of guys are kind of looking at this situation and thinking, you know. I want to get back there. I want to get back there, especially because I mean, you know, Peter Yan looked fantastic, didn't he? he? Looked fantastic, and what a fight that would be. Uh, um, with Marlon being a striker, I would imagine, you know, even as even as a striker, you lose a fight and you watch the fight back, and you're like, I have no ways I can beat this guy, and I, and I would imagine that, uh, that that Marlon's in that same situation. Moving to a new camp is is a, is a signifier that he felt like he needed to shake some things up, uh, and and it. Sometimes fighters just seem like they get a bit too comfortable in a particular place. And what, what Marlon's been hinting at, to me, certainly, is that it's difficult to spar with people that you're such good friends with. And because Mark Henry had such a, such a tight crew, everyone's you know working with each other every day, friendly every day. You know, it you, you gets to the stage where you don't want to punch him in the face too much. Right. Um, whereas now he's down at ATT. I mean, that mat is rammed with people, all different sizes, all different skills. I, I just think he's got some some more realistic sparring now, and I think that's what he was needing. Um, we we know Marlon's a devastating striker. Um, he's an excellent tie boxer, and back working with his old coach as well, I think that's probably reinvigorated some of those those old combinations. But at the same time, you know, he'll take stuff from Mark Henry and apply it to that. So he's probably in a best, better place than he ever has been. Um, and yeah, yesterday he was. There was just something that stood out to me because he was eating, he had like this like this little treat pot because obviously he's on a tight diet. And he, and he had this, it was like a, like a chocolate mousse or something. And we'd ask him a question and sometimes he was just completely lost in this part. <laughs> and he was like really taking his time. And then he'd, he'd like think about it and he was real matter of fact about it. He seems like he's in a very good place. And, and what was nice is that he was very honest about what he's up against with Sandhagen. You know, he's tall, he's rangy, he's difficult to get in on, he's unpredictable. So I, I think he's doing the right thing and just not trying to look too far ahead. Because even if you're right in position for a title shot, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get one, you know. Yeah. And then the flip side with Corey, I wonder what his mindset's like, right? Because he was like the guy. Like he, everybody's paying attention to him, you know. And he's on this, you know, astronomical ride, and he goes out and gets shut down really fast. Where, where's his head at now? Coming back, I mean, does he feel like, am I really that guy, or was was I not as good as I thought I was? Maybe. Yeah, I I think I think it's actually had the the opposite effect. I think he knows he's that guy, and I think the last fight made him realize he was he's that guy, and he wasn't acting like himself. You know, if you look at his career, he was on a streak of stopping everybody, and he was he was looking great as well. And then he ran into a couple of guys, Lineker and the Sunset, and it slowed down a bit. And it, and it wasn't. I mean, obviously, competition's gotten higher, but he's also he also kind of pulled back a little bit because these are really good guys. So if I'm beating them doing this, why would I change it? Um, and I think he's realised that he's just, he's got a killer instinct, and that's something that you can trust in there if you've got it. And I think you know the hesitation going into those fights, even though he came out with the split and the unanimous decision, I think that followed over into the Sterling fight, and he just wasn't himself. Um, and, and as, as frustrating as that was for him, I, I don't think it's going to slow him down. I think he realises that if he just goes in there and just kind of free flows and expresses himself as he is, that his, his killer instinct will actually do him some favours. Well, I want to get your, your thoughts on the main event, man. Uh, with Marlon and Corey, both of them are kind of in, in interesting positions. And I kind of wonder who you think has more to gain out of this opportunity, right? you got Marlon, the guy that probably should have been in a title shot already and kind of had it taken away from him. Um, and then you got Corey, who's the guy that 
everybody thought was the next big thing in the division, and then he got shut down in his last one out. Yeah. So who do you think's got kind of the, the, the higher stakes here? Right now? I think the higher stakes go to Marlon, just because, like you said, um, you know, he, he had the title shot kind of in front of him, the pandemic hits, things kind of change. You know, he was booked to fight Jan in June in Kazakhstan. Um, but I still th- it, I think it, it kind of sways towards Marlon because we know how this sport goes. Nothing is guaranteed until the two guys are actually in the octagon competing. You know, I'm under the pretense it's going to be Aljamain Sterling versus Peter Yan. But Marlon goes out and has a stellar performance against Corey Sandhagen, which is going to be a pretty tall order. Um, you know, he might snatch that away from, from, from Aljamain Sterling. Um, but I think, you know, the stakes are also high for, for Corey Sandhagen. I mean, he's been one of the, if not... One of the, if not the highly, t- most highly touted prospect in, in all weight classes right now. He needs to go solidify that. And he needs to go out and get this win. So it's high stakes for both guys. But I think that you know Marlon goes out and puts on a stellar performance. He could steal that title shot from from Algerman Sterling. So stakes are high all, all the way across the board. No doubt. Stylistically, I mean, these two guys are high level martial artists. So it's not just striking versus grappling. But those would seem to be the things that kind of stand out for both. I mean, do you think that's ultimately what this fight boils down to? I don't think it's going to be striker versus grappler. I think it's going to be striker versus striker. I think you know to grapple to Marlon Moraes, you got to get in his space, and that's that's very that's a that's a hard thing to do. Um, you know, I think it's going to be a, the, the story of the fight is going to be if it ends in the first half, it's going to be Marlon. I mean, the guy's a fast starter. He's a high octane fighter. Um, you know, but Corey Sandhagen's got the style where he can control the space. Um, he can control the fight. And, uh, you know, if it goes into the later rounds, I see Sanhagen winning this fight. So it's, it's very interesting. And I think the, the outcome of this fight really kind of hinges on Marlon's gas tank. And, I, you know, I, I'm not trying to dog on the guy. He's just he's that type of guy where he starts hot and he wins fights. I mean, he's got like 13 first round finishes through his whole career. So, you know, you can get out of that first, second round. You can kind of dictate the fight. So I think it's really going to kind of boil down to, like, how is Marlon's conditioning? How is he going to go full throttle from the first from the first round? Or is he going to kind of try to control his cardio kind of control his pace. It's going to be really interesting. Well, Paul, I want to ask you about the, the, the kind of the psychology of this fight, the main event, right? Like, it's really interesting because these two guys are the top of the division, but one guy, you know, should have had a title shot in Marlon. I mean, it was there, and it, it was kind of, I don't want to say taken away from him, but yeah, right. in some ways it was taken away from him versus a guy in Corey that was kind of this hot shot prospect and then just got shut down last time out. So give me an idea of kind of what the, the mindset of these guys is going to be. And is that going to, is that going to play into things here? Well, I don't think there's much for Corey really, you know, he's got another top dog in front of him and he knows that things didn't go his way against Al Jermaine, So he's got to go in there and prove himself. And I think, you know, that was kind of a slip up on his part. Uh, he underestimated him for one second and he took advantage of it. But for Marlon, yeah, it's, it's a, you know, it's tough. He has proven himself and was right there. Potentially should have been slipping into that um, that title shot, but it, it didn't work out. And we talked to him in fighter meetings, and he seems really positive. You know, he respects Jose Aldo, and and he's a legend. And he felt like you know, for him to have that opportunity to go in there, and maybe claim another title. So he doesn't really seem to be too bothered by it, which is good. So as far as his mindset coming into this fight, I think he knows that he's one fight away from potentially being right back into that picture. Yeah. On paper, it looks like it should be fun, right? I mean, both guys are pretty exciting. Yeah. Where Where do you look at, like, what's the aspect of the game that you think is going to be the most key in figuring out who wins this fight? I think the distance and the, the leg kicks for me because Corey, you know, talks about fighting at distance and using his range. He's very tall, bantamweight, but Marlon's so good at kicking the legs and uh, I, I expect him to really go after the calf in this one when you're fighting somebody that's so long and enjoys fighting at a distance well one way to take away that distance is to to attack that calf and really chop those legs down and then go after the body go up to the head and uh, he can use his boxing when Corey tries to maybe close that distance and make it a grappling match um, so that's where I think think things are going to really play out and Marlon's just so physically strong too man as a uh, a bantamweight, but as the fight goes later into the fight, we're going to see uh, that cardio of Sandhagen that's been on display in the past, and uh, Marlon's so strong, so explosive, similar to his teammate Edson, that as the fight kind of trickles on, we see that power meter come down a little bit. All right, so there you go, the, the, the experts breaking it down. So let's talk about this. The main event is a very, very relevant main event. I understand maybe not 
the two biggest stars. But if you're a hardcore, I mean, this this matters, and it matters in the division. So let's start with Marlon. Marlon Marias. I have been a fan of Marlon Marias since his World Series days. Man, the dude is fun. Um, he's not a big star. There's no question about it. And I think part of it is just, I mean, he's like super nice, and he's just yeah. never going to say anything bad about anybody. I can't see anybody wouldn't like his fighting style. I mean, dude, this dude's <laughs> so exciting. savage on the feet, right? Yeah, yeah. Got grappling skills as well. Um, he nearly so beat Cejudo for the title. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Now, obviously, kind of things went south very quickly, yeah, yeah. but man, he was he was close to doing that. So Marlon Moraes is a great fighter. Um, and 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 you know, we talked a little bit about with those guys about the psychology of it. Even him, as nice as he is, I gotta think he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder because, I mean, I, I will say him. He that, should. He should. I'll, there, that's probably a better way to say. It. Now, I'll give him credit. He, he is nice and he is respectful. And I was impressed at. Um, Honestly, it seemed like everybody in the division. When Aldo got the title shot, I thought it was amazing because hardly – like anybody that could have taken like a shot at him – I mean, even guys like Aljamain were like, that's eh, a legend, dude. Yeah. Let him go fight for the title. And Marlon was certainly one of those guys, right? But then the pandemic happens and everything's shifting around and all that. And the UFC hasn't booked Sterling versus Jan yet, which you would expect to happen. So, I mean, what do you th – like – could Marlon – if Marlon comes in here at some spectacular knockout – 100%, could, man. Could he jump to the front? You, you've you been in this longer than anyone, yeah. dude. You know when the writing's on the wall. Yes. And I think I think if fans like, pay enough attention, like, the writing's on the wall. I saw I've, – I've seen Aljamain tweeting that he's preparing for December. He hopes mm -hmm. it's in December. And I, I – but I but I saw the magic words from him, I think, on his Twitter camera. He's like, oh, you know, we've got to get the money right. Well – What's their fucking number one play that they do to everyone, yep. let alone a guy that clearly they have, for whatever reason, you and I have spoken about this before, they have some issue with promotion. Guys, I don't know what to tell you. Aljamain didn't want to fight. Yeah. Just Aljamain didn't want to fight. Mar Marlon's going to come out here, and if he fucking... I, I really believe if Marlon wins by a stoppage, he will cut in front of Aljo. Oh. I really think that. I, and I like Marlon a lot. And listen... Which, which by the way, would be bullshit. Just the, well, that's what I was going to say. Is on the one hand, you could go, well, hold on. He technically won the fight the last time out against Aldo, and Aldo got a title shot off a loss. Now, you know, so you, uh, very controversial to say the least. Again, a Listen, legend. Marlon beat, Marlon beat Aldo. Yeah. You and, know. hey, let's not forget what he did to Aljamain <laughs> Sterling. <laughs> right? How quick can they turn that <laughs> around, dude? Oh, you just you just wrote the other half of it. I mean, we are we just wrote the whole thing. You see what's going to happen. I actually – I, I – I, uh, um, I would really hate to see that to Aljo because I feel like the guy's done enough, and I feel yes. and I feel like him and Peter Yan, you know, they've been this young up and coming guys that have they've been the two dogs looking through defense at each other. Let's do it, you know. I, I just I don't know. I I, I just you see we're, the look, the we're looking at each other like, like fuck, mm -hmm. dude. You just know what's coming down the track. Aljo, get the contract signed now. Bro, bro. Yeah, take that. Get the contract signed take before. Your pay, so, yeah. yeah, call him up today. Call yeah. him up tomorrow. Because even I saw. P.D. Yan tweeting. I heard there's other news or something English. like that, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, in his fluent English, as we know, yeah. very strong. But I saw him saying, oh, I heard there was other plans, and you should I, be worried it, or something. I know English is a second language, but I believe the direct quote, perhaps there were some contra contractual obligations <laughs> that were not met in certain... No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. But uh, I, th I, think, I think the guys listening to this podcast, you just sometimes you can just see... As 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 a, a very fa a nice man in New York once said, you can see the fuckery coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So I mean, if you're Aljamain Sterling, you're sitting back right now praying for Corey Sanhagen, right? I. I it's tough, right? Because w fighters have that ridiculous confidence in themselves, and I, I believe Aljo probably thinks I've spoken to Aljo sure. on a couple of occasions. Yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 now he's a Vegas guy. Yeah, I don't think he. I don't think. Um, I don't think he thinks he's Dana White's best friend. I don't think he, they have animosity or anything, but I think he's aware that he could have probably got a title shot earlier than he has. I think he was concerned at one point that maybe, like, you know, Frankie could have slept in there if, if Frankie won really impressively sure. or something like that. Which I, as, as we said about Holly Holm, that's probably always a verifiable fear, you know, that a legend can come in and, and take it. But I, I, from judging by Aljo's tweets, he's not mentioned anything about this fight. He seems pretty sure he's going to get the title shot. Um, which is actually interesting because they've got a lot of titles that could be in December. There's a yeah, few man. titles that yeah, like, there is. They clearly like. Even though it seems like welterweights pushed back, we got you know heavy heavyweight, heavyweight, heavyweight. F women's strawweight. All right, let's talk about the flip side of it real quick before we talk about kind of the the technical breakdown. Corey Sanhagen, 
I'm still high on Corey Sandhagen. The last fight did not certainly did not go his way, and I think that was an embarrassing moment for it. I think Corey's been awesome in the way he's talked about it and just owned up to basically and, and I love the fact he said, Look, I'm not trying to make excuses, but I was so calm that night and I thought that was a good thing and I suddenly realized it's not. I need to be intense, I need to be on edge, um, and I need to change that. Um now, here's the thing with Corey that I'm not, not worried about, but it does make me think, and, you know, you heard some of the guys talking about there, that, uh, look, he, he, the guy sounds, when you talk to Corey, very self-confident, very, you know, strong in his belief of himself, and rightfully so, because I think he's incredibly talented, but there's got to be that little bit of doubt in the back of his mind, like, oh, my God, was I... Was I not where I thought I was? I was I was the guy. Everybody was telling me I'm I'm the I'm the I'm the you know Dominic Cruz 2.0 or whatever, and then you know I get shut down. That's gotta mess them a little bit. I would say yes, but I, it, it has to. It has to as a human being to prepare for something so much and then just have it just taken away from you by another guy. Yep. That must be on your mind, but. If I would ask for, if I could in that position ask for anything to counter those doubts, it would be the promotion coming to me with a better opportunity than I just had, because that would seem to be an act of faith in me from them, and you would assume that they know what they're doing. So I think if I had doubts, I'd be like, "Fuck these motherfuckers!" Still thinking I can go. Right. Maybe not say it like that, but yeah, you know, yeah. but that would be a vote of confidence in me that I probably would need at that or point. Or a vote that they really hate Aljamain Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> what the two? What <laughs> the <laughs> Well, but you yeah. are right. I see where you're coming or from. Or we needed someone for Marlon and you're yeah. fucking there. Yeah. <laughs> but but I would take it in the positive light. I would so. definitely take it the positive way as well. No, listen, I think Corey is, is, is very, very talented. Um, I, I like what Kiesa talked about. You know, like, listen, this is not striker versus grappler. And I know that... That may have sounded weird when I asked because it's not that Corey is only a grappler. He's slick on the feet as well. But I just don't think you want to stand in front of Why Marlon. You? you know what I mean? I think you got to do so. But for him to say, look, you got to get into that space. Um, and then, of course, you know, guys kind of brought up the gas tank as well, which I, I think is fair. Uh, everybody's favorite gambling expert from the UFC, Gianni the Greek. Hey. <laughs> oh, I hate to make fun of somebody for their voice, but it's a really weird voice. Um, Says the man with the, the deepest voice <laughs> in mixed martial arts. <laughs> uh, he did say, but I, I like what he said, even though I know a lot of people hate his picks. I did think this was smart. He said that he liked Sanhagen because I think Sanhagen opened as an early underdog. Now he's actually a favorite, so all the value is out of the really? line. Really? Yeah, that's what he said. The line got swished. If I remember, now granted, it was about 5 o'clock in the morning, and you know how we're having trouble <laughs> sleeping here. I wasn't on the sauce. I wasn't okay, on okay, dad's okay. medicine. No, no, no. I was just, it was just, it was just, you know how we're having trouble sleeping yeah. here. Uh, but anyway, no, but here's what he said. He said, listen, so I think the value is gone. I liked him as an underdog. I don't want to pour more money on as a favorite. But what he did say, and I thought this was an interesting strategy. And again, I always frame this by saying I don't bet. But I, I, I like, you know, the kind of strategy behind it. He said, what I'm going to do is once it gets past round one, I'm going to start going live on Sanhagen because oh, wow. I, cause he's like, look, I do feel like I liked his value as an underdog, but I was scared about round one. Now that he's the favorite, I don't want to play him there anymore, but what I, what I want to do is play him live as the fight goes on because I believe if he gets past round one, it's things really favor. start to favor for him. And I was like, you know what, that's not a bad strategy. That's not a bad strategy. I mean, if, I, again, I wouldn't gamble because – I would be broke, um, <laughs> but uh, but I, I understand. That I, to be honest, live bet. It, it, when it comes to mixed martial arts, I always find the combat sports in general. I find betting to be a bit of a, a, a loser situation because the odds are never that crazy. Right. And if they are, it's for a reason, right? You know, like Felicia Spencer, Amanda Nunes it was like that because she's going to fucking lose. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Uh, there's never been a fight where I think oh, I'll make a lot of money back on that, and it's still a realistic chance of it happening. Right. But I would actually say hearing and not to argue with you know the Greek, but I, mean, I, yeah, I would, how do you argue with Johnny? But the Greek? I would say surely if Marlon's now the underdog, I think Marlon. I would actually say Marlon is probably the favorite in the fight. So if he's the underdog, why wouldn't you bet on the underdog and get a better return? Right. Well, that's a good point there. We'll see. Well, neither of us know enough to <laughs> fucking come in. <laughs> I like ask you the Brit here, and I can. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can be the Brit. Uh, all right. So uh, okay, the technical side of it, man. I mean, uh, what do you think? Is San Hagen too much for Marias? Is it is is? I mean, it's it's interesting to me because um, I, I I do feel like San Hagen is the real deal, but I feel like Marias is the real deal as well. So I know that this is probably not going to be the most watched fights in UFC history or anything along those lines, or even in recent days. But I mean, to me, it's incredibly relevant, and I, I'm intrigued by this fight. I like this fight. Yeah, for me, I think uh, Marlon's been tagged with the gas tank thing. 
uh, which is fair enough. Mm -hmm. But I also think Marlon's very smart and self-aware enough to know that he's got to work on stuff. I don't yep. think he looked like he was going blown out of his ass against Aldo in the third round. He looked quite competent. Yep. So I think if Marlon's able to uh, disengage from the grappling quickly, if he doesn't allow Corey to grab him and sort of hold him and put that pressure on him, if he can separate and sort of strike to discourage that, I think he should win. Um, if Corey can sort of take the steam out of him, maybe maybe like maybe like Gianni says, just sort of get through round one. Mm -hmm. You know, just sort of take it slow and get through round one. And, you know, get get to the later rounds, I would say. I could see halfway through round three, I'd say Sandhagen's a favorite. But until then, Marlon would be the heavier favorite. I had to check my picks, and I picked Marlon Marias. I couldn't even remember. That's how 50-50 I was in this fight. I, I ended up going with Marias, and I, I do that with – Zero percent confidence. I think this is <laughs> to me. This is a coin flip fight, man. Yeah, and those are the best ones to watch. Those are. Those are excited. All right. Uh, by the way, I should say if you like what you're hearing, do us a favor. Wherever you're listening, uh, make sure you're logged in. Make sure you t take a second to uh, rate us, review us, do all those things. You can give us five stars, whatever the highest rating is. We'd appreciate that. Leave us some feedback if you can. I listen on Apple Podcasts, but wherever you are, we're all over the place. My man, Cold Coffee, does a great job making sure to distribute it everywhere. But just make sure you subscribe to make sure you uh, review us. Uh, by the way, talk about those guys, uh, Kiesa, Felder, uh, Hardy. We had seen Felder and Hardy already. How about Kiesa kind of openly admitting how bad his surgery went? Now, he didn't go into details uh, about exactly what it was, but, man, I thought it was pretty interesting for him to be like, dude, I'm, I'm hoping for January because my surgery sucked and uh, things didn't go the way I said. I think I think he ended up saying like it was it ended up being hours when it was supposed to be like a matter of minutes, basically. Yeah, yeah he, he – I think everyone's had a rough 2020, but from Kiesa's point of view, I think it was a really shit. Yeah, man. I, 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 you know, I had wondered why he wasn't booked. I mean, I knew he was recovering for surgery, but I figured, you know, listen, man, he's very relevant in that division. It's probably about that time. We got to get him booked again. But yeah, I mean, he sounded like January was a, a maybe. He didn't even sound confident about that. So uh, t said he'd tell us more about it later. He didn't want to talk about it on camera. He said, which was understandable. He's like, look, yeah, I'm yeah. not throwing it out there. Where I, enjoy, knows I enjoyed that. On. He was like, you know. I don't want to talk about it, but it's an injury on my leg. I was like, well, they, you've only got two to pick from, Kiesa. So they, they'll work it out. Uh, uh, you got a 50-50 shot. Well, you yeah. went for the wrong one, you yeah. dummy. Uh, yeah, but anyway, yes, I um, I like that stuff. I like, you know, self-awareness, honesty at the same time. It's cool. I do too. You know, Kiesa did take a lot of blowback. I've seen a little bit online for his comments. And here's an interesting debate too because he's dead right, but I think fans don't like hearing it. When he said, you know, the Hamza Shemaya fight, it's not worth it for me right now, and I understand why these other people don't want to take it because Hamza, as big of a star as he is right now in terms of just immediate star, in terms of, like, the fire behind him right now, it's big, but he doesn't have a number next to his name yet. He's not a proven commodity, and if you beat him, people are just going to say the dude wasn't as good as he was to begin with. Where, where did you stand on that? Because I thought what, 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 what Kiesa was saying, which was basically, man, look, this is business. It's sport, it's entertainment, it's competition, but it's business too. And the smart business play right now is to not fight this guy until he has a little more skins on the wall, right? Where he's got a little bit more uh, in the bank in terms of where he stands. I mean, everybody's popular right now. He's one of the most Googled guys, one of the most searched guys, but is he one of the most respected guys? No. And if you beat him, all of a sudden you beat a guy that wasn't that good to begin with. Fair, but I did see some blowback as well. So I think it's circumstantial. I think it depends on the fighter in question, right? So, for example, I think if Stephen Wonderboy Thompson beat Kamzat, I don't know if it does that much for Stephen Thompson. But then at the same point, if Leon Edwards beat Hamzat, everyone's always saying there's no interest in Leon, then I think there is there, that does do something for That's you. That's interesting. I think if you want to look at a recent example, Martin Chido, Marlon Chido Vera mm -hmm. versus Sean O'Malley, right? Okay, is Vera now the superstar that O'Malley is? No. no. Probably never will be. For if but he's a lot more. But he, he, people know who he is now. I so, agree. And I think Hamzad is significantly bigger than O'Malley. So by proxy, I would say if you beat him, just by being in the cage with him, you have more eyes oh, on you than usual. You know what, man? That's a fair point. That is actually a really good point, man. That's a, that's a great uh, you know example there because – and let's, I mean, look, they already said they're trying to do it as a main event, right? So just the fact that it would likely be a main event. Because I agree, if you were Th like... That card will be f huge. Yeah, if you were like, if you were like uh, hey, uh, you know, Wonder Boy is taking on Hamzat on... I mean, you could say, like, the featured prelim, but, or just the second fight on a pay-per-view or something. You know what I mean? Like, maybe, I, I don't know, but knowing that it's 
going to be a main event, or at least that's what they're saying they're trying to do. Yeah, now maybe it does have a little bit more weight. I th I think if you're someone like Chiesa, Magni, who I think has called for it, I'd be trying to get that guy right away because the biggest feedback those guys ever hear is that they're dull or uninteresting. Yeah. If you can't, and I'm not trying to say, uh, Chiesa's not uninteresting at all. No, no, but, no. But for whatever reason, they don't get that traction. Right, right. If that's the criticism you have, and you don't know how to appeal to those people who are criticizing you in that fashion, fucking go beat the guy they are liking and take take that shit. You know what's and funny? I, I think Leon Edwards, personally, I think Leon Edwards should snap that fight up. That's actually a good point, too, because I'll be honest, when Magny came out and said, I'll take that fight, I, I was kind of against it only because I'm like, don't make Magny do that. You know what I mean? Like, he's always the guy that <laughs> yeah, has to yeah, be. Yeah, he the, is the guy. He's yes. the guy that's got to be the B-side every time, right? And I didn't like that. But you are right, and especially, you know, Leon Edwards, who just gets, I mean, his – what I mean, what a terrible year this has been yeah. for him and just getting completely disrespected. Those are good fights for either one of those guys. Either one of those guys would, would gain a ton by beating that guy. I, I, I really believe if I was Leon, I'd just be like, yep. And, the, and I, would, I would play the card. I don't know how much he wants to act, but he would not be wrong to say, I've been fucking disrespected by the fans. I've been disrespected by the promotion. I should have beaten Woodley and fought for the title on Fight Island. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the guy you're grooming. I'm going to smash him, and then I'm going to go into the next fight like for the that. title, by the way. I'm going to fucking take that too. I like that. I like that. Someone call Leon. <laughs> Get him on the phone now, man. If only we knew his management team. How did we get that? <laughs> no, you know, it's funny. Um, I think I don't think Kiesa was wrong in what he said, but I think what you laid out is perfect. It's not a blanket rule. It's not just a hard and fast yeah, because, blanket rule. Because then I think if Stephen Thompson, uh, for some reason, there's just less. Uh, I don't. Uh, if you said to me, Stephen Thompson beat Hamza, I'd be like, oh, okay. I guess he wasn't ready. Yeah. Just for the reason the personalities don't gel. It doesn't make sense. I yep. don't. I, and that's one of the. Um, unquantifiable things about MMA, I guess. It's tough, man. It's tough. All right, let's talk about the rest of this card here. Um, uh, you know, Edson Barbosa versus Maquan Amir Khani. Again, another fight that on the surface I can see people going, eh, I, I don't think they'll do that because I think Edson is such an established commodity that, that people want to tune in and watch Edson fight, right? And for me, anybody that's a long-time listener of this show knows I'm a big fan of Maquan Amir Khani as well, man. Mr. Finland, unique personality. It's crazy because he's so exciting in the cage, and then when you talk to him, he's just very, I don't know. I <laughs> missed the DMT. To, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, right. It's uh, it's wild. But this is so. I think the name value is there certainly for Barbosa. I like Maquan Khan. I think hardcores will probably have a little bit of an affinity for him. But you know they're kind of in the situation where Barbosa back to back split decision losses, three losses overall. I think he, I want to say he's one in five in his last six somewhere along those. I mean he has not had good results as of late. Again, still a guy I think you want to watch fight. Um, and then Maquan Amir sure. who is just like he'll have one spectacular performance, then he'll lay out for a year and, and, and not fight again. But he's saying, I'm turning that around. I'm making sacrifices in my life. Um, I, 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 the way I lay out this is it's, it doesn't have any title implications. This doesn't have any – this has literally nothing to do with rankings. Stylistically, I think it's intriguing because Barbosa, one of the most dangerous kickboxers in the history of the UFC. Amir Khani has the ability to finish fights, but you think of him more, obviously, for his wrestling background. So it's a clash of styles. Um, it's a clash of guys that – want to prove they matter, man, that want to prove That's they're relevant. Put, yeah, I think you, you hit the nail on the head there. Uh, certainly from Edson uh, at the media day, I felt like he was, oh, I understand my time is short, now's the time. I felt something off those last two split decision losses. This is my time to run for the title now. Mm -hmm. No disrespect to Edson. I think he said it's been his time a it few times, true. but um, that's the correct attitude a fighter needs to have. If he came out and said, well, I'm just going I need to get past this one, and then we'll yeah, focus. Yeah. I want. I I like hearing fighters who have goals. I like hearing guys who say like, no, 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 I'm going to do this, and then yeah. I can do that. Um, but I think you hit the nail ahead, man. They got to got to prove they matter. Yeah. Um, which is actually always a very risky place for a fighter to be, right? Because then if you lose, like, does that mean you don't? Don't matter. Right. So Ed from Barbosa, I didn't realize. I think he's ranked number fourteen. And for a guy that established, you always just kind of imagine like he's he's perennially seven. He's right. always like number six or seven. Yeah. And so when you check and you and then you like you said his record, you know he's lost five out of his last six. Um, you start thinking, man, are we is the, oh have we been witnessing the decline and we didn't notice? Yeah. Right? Um, so this is an interesting fight because Edson it, he he needs to win. You know you can't get four losses and get away with it basically. Nope. And Macmillan he needs to win because otherwise you're just going to be one of the guys, you know? It's, a, it's an interesting fight with a bigger stakes than first appearance. I agree. I agree. Uh, ben Rothwell versus Marcin Tabura in the uh, the heavyweight feature there. 
Um, you know, and then uh, after that, it gets down to some to some prospects and that sort of thing. But I will say, there's some uh, there's some fights I think that are going to be uh, exciting on here. Um, the one that we were uh, told a lot to look out for by the people we were, you know, the, the the experts that were digging into the card. We said, hey, what are you guys looking out for? Uh, Ilya Taporia versus Yusef Salah was one that stood out. I think that's one that stood out to us as well. That could be very very exciting. Uh, I know you're very high on, on Tom Aspinall, right? I yeah. mean, I think you believe that that, that he well, he's a fighting real a French deal. guy. So there you go. Boy, look at you. You were trying to stir it up <laughs> so bad. You're like, he's trying to. Man, that gr first you asked the French guy, man, don't you want to beat this slaggy English guy? Yeah, I said, I said, I, I think I said to him, oh, does it matter that he's English? Does that give you extra intensive? And he was like, no. And I was like, well, okay, fuck you then. <laughs> and then uh, I said to Tom, like, he was talking so much. Before we rolled, I was like, he's talking so much shit, dude. And, uh, and they were like, was he really? I'm like, nah, yeah. he wasn't. I was just trying to, you know, it was copy some of our fellow colleagues. <laughs> um, no, but. Uh, yeah, that was obviously just a bit of a tongue-in-cheek humor between the English and French. But I, I really am high on Tom Aspinall. I yep. think part of that is um, he moves very cool for a heavyweight, especially in MMA. I think he's got great movement for heavyweight. I'm still just blown away by his apparent desire to fight fucking Spivak. By the <laughs> way, though, how funny was that, right? So you and I both cracked up when last time I fought Alan. He was like, oh, I want to fight Sergey Spivak. We're like, what a random call-out. And then we talked to him in the media day. We're like, oh, if you win, what's next? He's like, yeah, maybe Sergey Spivak. And we're all like... <laughs> What is up with Sergey Spivak? <laughs> but he had a great answer. He's like, well, listen, last time it was just because we were right around the same time. Or he's like, this time we both had a full camp for each yeah. other. I was like, for the random call out, you've got some awesome the like, the logistics funny, behind it. The funny thing is, peeling back the curtain, we're sitting right in front of these guys. You know, We're literally like face to face with them. And I, that was one time where I couldn't hide my reaction, which I think was a bit of like a confused wrinkle of the nose. Like, what the <laughs> fuck? And he, I saw his tone change. He's like, I'd like to fight him. No, because... Yeah, so um, I enjoyed that, but uh, it did. Conf I still don't get it. Fuck, man. But um, <laughs> I. But for me, he's interesting. I like the fact he's sparred with Fury, and he said, you know, before I sparred with him, it was life and death for me. Yeah. And, uh, and now, like the guys couldn't be more chill. But like, even at media day, he he was. That was cool. Yeah. If you want to go, I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't know the, about the, the sparring history of Tyson me Fury. Either. But uh, it was on. Uh, if you so, if you want to go check out the full uh, video, it's on uh, MMA Junkie YouTube page on MMA Junkie as well. But yeah, it was cool how he said like just being around and really like changed my attitude of, of how to deal with things. I thought that was awesome. And and uh, I think there's always something interesting when a star, Darren Till being a star, just so publicly advocates like, oh, this guy is a champion in the making. Um, that that makes you pay attention right um, but I, I, I very en I enjoyed his uh, his sort of chill thing he's mm -hmm. just here he's like oh yeah I'm here having a fight rah, rah, rah. I liked it Drickus Duplessis is a guy and he's fighting a French guy and he's fighting a French guy <laughs> so the hell with him uh, Drickus Duplessis is a guy that's been on the, uh, the the international scene for a while I think he's one of the kind of guys that if you were super hardcore watching the global stage you kind of thought about him as like one of the best guys that's not in the UFC um, so you know former KSW vet EFC double champ um and he's fighting Marcus Perez, who uh, – Marcus Perez was interesting too, man. Marcus Perez actually is always an interesting character, but, you know, he kind of talked about his life uh, resetting right now. And uh, I, I know this is going to anger some people, but also talking about the fact that he's working two jobs while he's getting ready for a UFC fight, doing construction and security, uh, and baffled you with his love of, of construction. I honestly thought – so I, uh, I asked him what – I'm sure my dad has listened to this, and I used to work for him in construction <laughs> – um, oh, sorry. <laughs> I did, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm baffled because you were like, I also share a similar love. I asked him, why does he... I said, oh, what do you hate most about construction? He's like, I love it. And I, I just said, what? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> I also loved it. It was great. That's <laughs> uh, not how it went. No. Pops. Just <laughs> said. Uh, all right, so that, that's an interesting. Drinkers to Plus, we'll see if he's the real deal. Like I said, he's a guy that kind of comes in with a, a, a high hopes from a lot of people on the international scene. But the one guy that everybody kept mentioning uh, on the broadcast team who actually delivered uh, was KB Bueller, right? Everybody was saying this guy is just a personality. And this is, again, you know, we all like technical fighters and we all like, you know, the, we, we love this guy's ground game. We love this guy's stand up. We love this guy's. But there's just something about characters, right? And, and, and KB Bueller uh, definitely came in, was a, a little weird to start out, but got rolling by the end of it. And then the next thing he's telling us about Jurassic Park and he's dorking out with Jose bro, Young bro, over bro. some Pokemon. So I'm going to, uh, we'll pull, pull back the curtain here. So I hadn't, hadn't really heard of him other than they said, oh, he's a character. When he came in and you were asking him the stand, you know the yeah, question, the questions you got to ask. Civil, yep. I actually wrote on WhatsApp to text you. Um, this guy's fucking boring, <laughs> like that. 
And then Jose Young, who's actually sat next to us at Steels, he's just joined us. I think is that a is that a tap water or vodka? Ooh, okay, that right, gets right. Uh, good. Right. Getting going on a Thursday <laughs> afternoon. But uh, Jose asked him about what game he was playing on his games console some sort of Jose fucking question and he went insane he's like I'm playing Pokemon I've got to get the Pokedex build and then we started talking about dinosaurs and he went off and then he was the most interesting guy of the day yeah man and I it was it, it very entertaining it, and he, he spoke about his mother you know abusing him as a child by destroying his dinosaur video <laughs> by, pretty a, funny. by destroying the video it was the lost world because he said about the, the T-Rex eating the guy in the toilet Sorry. It was very, yeah, it, it affected his entire life, and so he got <laughs> her back by cage fighting. So, uh, Take that, Mom. <laughs> Chris Dawkins is on the prelims. He's a CFFC guy, so I'll be cheering for him, obviously, uh, on the inside, of course, not outwardly. Impa Kasangane versus Joaquin Buckley. Uh, Impa Kasangane looks like the real deal. I will say this, Joaquin Buckley, man, I was entertained by his debut. He came up short, um, but I, I thought he came to brawl, so I was I was happy with that. I know, speaking of Jose Youngs that's, that's here now, I know he's been – uh, high on Giga Chikadze, I know he's, uh, which I am too. I mean, he's, he's a fun fighter to watch. And the matchup with Omar Morales could be very, very exciting. I think that could potentially be a fight of the night type uh, matchup. Tracy Cortez is here, a, a girl that really had some um, some momentum behind her in 2019. And then things kind of slowed down with, with uh, the pandemic. She's fighting a newcomer in Stephanie Egger. So, so I think there's some name recognition at the top of this card. Um, but it is more of a prospect space overall. But I do think we could be in for entertaining night. So so I'm excited for this one. And then, of course, you know, I think next week is, is the big main event that everybody's excited about. And then we get into the to the final pay-per-view. So I feel like, you know, like we said, we're we're at that Hotel California stage of Fight Island right now. We're just passing the halfway mark. But I think we're going to be okay on on, uh, on the fight card itself. And it's then we'll early. be hitting the home stretch. It's early. It's, early. it's at midnight. It's super early, right? It's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's crazy Basically right now. Real we're like, day. oh, I love midnight cards. Yeah, yeah no, I, I think uh, – this is one of those cards where obviously you look at it at, and on on paper it's you know who's these guys. But if you look at the individual fights and individual athletes, yep. there are stories and people that have the potential at least to suddenly be on a main card of a pay per view and being skyrocketed. I agree. All right, listen. Uh, outside the UFC, we won't talk about Bellator a lot, but uh, it's worth mentioning, right? Bellator over in France, they're making their debut in France. I've got to think that. The USC is maybe just a little salty about this. You know what I mean? No disrespect to Bellator. Hey, look, you know what? In fairness, Bellator has made a very strong investment in Europe. So I can't say it's completely out of line for them to do this, but I don't think that they were really involved in all the political battles. I mean, <laughs> Fran France basically is the New York of Europe, at least in terms of MMA regulation. I don't know if that comparison would work in many other ways, but in terms of MMA regulation, they were kind of the last holdout. And the UFC has been working for a long time with the IMMAF and some of these other organiza organizational bodies to try to get things, you know, all completely legalized and, and ready to go. And now, uh, now the Bellator is going to swoop in and, and take that on. I, I got to think that, that uh, again, but Bellator probably deserves that too. Like they're, I mean, they're doing more with the European series than, than the UFC is in a lot of ways. So I'm not trying to take the shine completely off them, but I bet the UFC is a little salty. I mean, they might be, but then they could check the amount of events they put on this year versus the amount Bellator have put on this year, and then maybe cry their dry their tears of that money. But I think <laughs> Bellator, I actually person I personally I don't know if anyone else agrees this. I personally Bellator could repackage itself as a European promotion, and I think they do much better in Europe than they do in the States. I don't. That sounds like I'm dissing them, but I think they the matchmaking the stars they have in Europe MVP Gallagher, but I feel like. So that's an interesting. I, I hadn't I, thought about that, but that's interesting. Even Paul Daly, who yeah. quits every other week. Yep. I think they have a bigger. Certainly now, certainly now, the UFC has been so centric. USA. I feel better to have a, a larger, larger hold on Europe than the UFC. I will say this. I think they're. I was a little surprised at the fights that they're going with here. So they. they, they man, here's the other thing. They're doing that thing where they divide it into two events, and then it gets kind of confusing about what. This is man, Bellator. Fucking one step forward, you know. So they they're on BBC now, and then that's fantastic. And then you just know that something insane is going to happen on Fight Night, and I don't know. Czech Congo versus Timothy Johnson is one of your main events. Now that makes sense. Czech Congo, the longtime Frenchman. Uh, I understand that, you know. So I, I get that. But then you've got so that's Bell Tour Europe ten. Then you've also got Bell Tour two forty eight, which is MVP Michael Page versus Ross Houston. I do not understand this fight at all. Ross Houston is a uh, is a good fighter, man. He the, the he's, he's he's nobody to just he's not a scrub. He's not a can. 
But there's no way anybody in the U.S. audience, unless they're the hardest of hardcore, knows who Ross Houston is. MVP, meanwhile, is one of your stars. Are you suggesting they're putting MVP up against a random guy? Well, I'm saying <laughs> that the random guy has a chance to win, but nobody knows that. I I, I'm not saying he will win. I'm not saying he should win. But what I'm saying is he's a better fighter than I think random guy would, would suggest. But, yeah, in terms of – in terms of public awareness, he's absolutely a random guy. So now what happens? Ross Houston comes out and beats Michael Page. Wow, okay, amazing result. And you go, oh, well, who's that random guy that beat Michael Page? Now, Michael Page starches Ross Houston. You go, well, of course he did. That guy's a can. Yeah. So that, ah, oh, just a little maddening. I, I find, I, I like Bettisor. I, I I believe that may needs competition. But I would respectfully say that their matchmaking uh, has often left me uh, a little bit more than perplexed, and this is one example of that. You know, MVP, the the booking of MVP's career has been odd to me. Yeah. And for a moment, yeah, for, for a moment, it looked like we were getting on track. He was in the tournament, all that good stuff. Had the worst fight in the world with Daly, but <laughs> yeah, at least he was getting booked against names. And now they're just back to the old routine. Just yeah. It's almost like they've. Uh, accepted the fact that it does more for them in terms of clicks and views to have him do something crazy and knock out a randomer than actually have him in competitive fights. It's better for them to just have the replay of him kicking some fucker in the head. I agree. Than it does to have him in competitive fights and I just I don't want that. Weird situation. Alright, by the way, uh on the And it's in France, so <laughs> <laughs> Jake the bias is out there. By the way, check this out man. I know that we've been through a slow time uh in MMA but check this out this weekend. One championship in Singapore, Bellator in France, KSW, of course, in Poland. We're here in Abu Dhabi. Strong little international weekend, man. There's a lot of – it's starting to starting to fill back up a little bit, man. We're starting to get this thing going again. I like jinxing things too, John. Fair enough. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, we did, by the way, get our first uh, little taste of uh, – of Michael Chandler, right? Over this past yeah. week, man, we got he had like a, a press conference. Now he's been going out on social media. I say press conference. He did a, a virtual media call, and now I saw uh, what earlier today he's going out on 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 Twitter, uh, kind of going at Tony, Tony Ferguson. I tell you what, I saw a clip from um, Anatomy of a Fight or right. Fight Right, right, And I, I, I'll be honest with you, I've I've seen Michael Chandler's fights a lot. I haven't seen him as a person very much. I've seen him. You know, talk about God and stuff at like the post fight, but I haven't seen his personality very much. And they had a clip of him telling Kamaru Usman for about five minutes that Mike Perry went to a private school, graduated with a 4.1 GPA, and was actually a genius and did it with a complete dry, straight face. And it was very, very funny. You just sold him out, huh? Yeah, he was, he was, oh, he, that's he, great. He was, like, he was like, Yeah, you know, he had the mohawk, the tie, you know, he, and he's like, What did he study? Liberal arts, <laughs> like stuff like that. I did and not it was see genius. That. So I thought, That's so funny. I love that sort of like dry sense of humor. I didn't know that about him. If he Dude. comes in like that, and, and similar to poking to fun at Tony, that would be cool. That's how you need to come in. By the way, yeah, no, that's what I, I kind of want to mention is that I think that I think Michael Chandler is going to thrive this fight. Now, now he's got to come in and fight some absolute monsters, and we'll see how that holds up. But if he can come in with a little bit of this swagger, which I believe I, I've been around him enough, I think the thing is like a in Bellator, I think he felt like the brand was on his back, so I think he was always a little bit. Let's be let's be careful how far we go. Let's represent yeah. the Bellator brand well. The other thing is too is, and again, no disrespect to Bellator, but he doesn't have the depth of competition to poke fun at. You know what I mean? Like him and him and Pitbull can only go back and forth at each other so many times yes. where you're like and and they do. You know <laughs> what I mean? But but it's the same thing. You know, you start getting into you start getting into that John that John Jones and Izzy territory. We're like, we got it. Yeah. You don't like him. They're putting each other on speed dot eventually. You're gonna knock <laughs> out his brother. I oh, got it. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Same thing. Um but dude, I mean with a fresh roster of of studs on the other side of the cage that you can kind of poke fun at a little bit, and, you and can people who will poke fun back. Yeah, Dan man. Hook, Dan Hooker will be great. Oh, great that'll adversary. be great. You got Dustin Poirier, I think, would be pretty cool. I think Tony already made it clear that he would talk a gang of shit. Yeah, probably none of it intelligible, but certainly a lot. Yeah, well, I, we don't. Nobody knows what it means except for him, but it'll be there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, hell, there's an Irish guy who's pretty good at saying a few <laughs> words every now and again. Not that I think that was going to happen anytime soon, but uh, I'm excited for Chandler to come in. But I do have uh, an asterisk of I need to see that first fight first because right. th there is a step up in competition between Bellator and the UFC and in the lightweight division. So tough. Quite a large step up. So tough, man. 
anybody in that top ten could go be competitive for the Bellator title. Like I, I think, I think, you know, even guys like Felder who are, you know, considering they're on their way out are still fucking crazy. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Uh, all right, listen, I, I wanted to mention that just because I we got we got the little taste of him. I can't wait for him to get to Fight Island. We get to talk to him in person as well. I'm gonna ask him about Mike Perry's GPA. I love it. That, Bring that out. Hundred percent. I haven't seen that clip. I'll I'll look up that clip. I, I love Anatomy of Fire. That's good. Uh, all right, real quick ones. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Brendan Fitzgerald, uh, USC announcer. He had me on his show, uh, Fitz Nation. It's been relaunched. It used to be Fitz and a Fighter, but he took a little break. COVID 19 kind of made some changes to his plans. He has to do things a little bit different these days. Crazy. So now it's uh, Fitz Nation. But uh, he had me on there. A lot of people that listen to this show will probably already know a lot of the stuff that's on there. We kind of talk about my background and my history to, to getting where we are today. Uh, but it was fun to talk to him about it. Did and, you uh, ask? Did he ask about the first question thing? He did ask. Oh, of course he did. Yeah, <laughs> come on, you know what's in there. So you know, a lot of people know about that stuff. But it, 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 if, if not my episode, check out some other episodes because he does like hour-long, in-depth conversations with people, and I think it's kind of cool because he can cover a lot of ground in an hour with people. You know, uh, and then lastly. CFFC 86 and 87 are official for later this month. That's right, baby. <laughs> That's right, baby. Me and CM Punk back together again on the mic. Uh, it'll be out there in uh, Philly, so I will head straight from Fried Island to uh, Philadelphia to uh, call are some really? fights out there. I'm going to go to Vegas first. And, and then, then yeah, yeah. Yeah. God damn. God never stops. God never stops. But you know what, man? Got to go put that work in, baby. Got bills to pay. Got money. Got bills to pay, man. <laughs> I've been sending my wife flowers every Monday. I'm broke, man. I need, Jesus. you know. Gotta try. Really? Every Monday? Every Monday. Just to let her know that uh, I you're not so bad, you. are you, John? I'm not a bad guy, man. I try to try to let her know with sweet notes attached too, not just really, not just flowers, but some really individualized, meaningful notes. That's hopefully. good because I've been spending the same amount of money on jewelry for myself, so it's all waiting for me when I get time. <laughs> You gotta love the one that got you there. You know what I mean. So it's all you, baby. It's all got the Mac Life logo. In. <laughs> Phenomenal. All right, man. Well, listen. We'll uh, we won't keep it too long today. We've got a we've got a, a dinner to go to tonight. Very exciting plans this yeah, evening. Yeah. Do you remember when I told you I wasn't gonna get drunk before the dinner? Ah, uh, you know. Three beers in. You think I ever thought that was true? Come on. <laughs> yeah. To pull back the curtain, I said, "Hey, John, can we do the the dinner's at seven? I said, "Can we do the podcast at five? Because I have a pacing issue." And if we start earlier, I'll be a fucking wreck by the time the dinner is. And he said, oh, well, you know, time for uploading stuff. Well, okay, we'll do it at three. <laughs> <laughs> he said, where? Shall we, shall we just do it in the room? Well, well, why change a winning Let's formula? Let's guts go down to the bar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, you know, that's what we do here. We take all, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. We, we, we know each other. It's kind of good. Go. It's good. good. <laughs> uh, so, anyway... I don't even know how you end on that. That's too funny. <laughs> what we'll just say is uh, check us out for the and a half, of course, over at patreon.com slash the MMA Roadshow. And uh, for everybody else, thanks for listening.